Hello everyone! In this video we will look at the deformation triangle and what makes it special and different from the regular attribute triangle. So the main difference between them is that the deformation triangle can calculate derivatives. And the best way to show what this means is of course to show an example. So let's create a geometry node and inside create a test geometry. I'm going to select for instance template head. And let's create a polyframe node. And this one will give us a normal and a tangent attribute. So here, let's visualize the tangent U. Just normalize it. And also the normal. So here we can see the normals and the tangent U. And now let's create a simple deformation in VIX. For instance, let's create a simple rotation. And first, let's do it in an attribute triangle, and then we will compare the results with the deformation triangle. So, first, the attribute triangle, and we're going to just rotate it around the z axis. So, I'm going to create a matrix and rotate it. We are going to define the angled parameter and rotate it around the z-axis. A small mistake there, a missing bracket. So here we have now an angle. Let's just modify the range a bit. Now all we have to do is just multiply the point by this transformed matrix. So now as we look at the results here, we see that when we rotate the normal and tangent u vectors are not rotating with the geometry, but rather continue pointing in the same direction as before. So to update the normals, we can use the update normals if displaced, and this will update the normals. So if we now rotate and change this angle, we see that the normal is not properly updated. However, the tangent u is not. It cannot be updated this way. And this is where the deformation wrangle comes in. So let's create here a deformation wrangle. And first notice that we have a pause and X form variables here. And this is the first thing about the deformation wrangle is that it cannot write into attributes the same way as an attribute wrangle. So for instance, we cannot write to the attributes this way. It will return an error. So that's why we have to use these two variables, the pause and the X form. The pause is the position of the point and writes directly to the point's position. And the X form is the three by three matrix that is used to calculate the derivatives, as we'll see a little later. Of course, we could just use the set point attribute function to write to other attributes, but in such case, we might just consider using the attribute triangle instead. As the deformation triangle is really to modify the position of points and calculate the derivatives. So, Position attribute is used to update the point position. So instead of using at P, we now use the pause attribute. So if we now want to use the previous code and just copy it, and here, instead of at P, just use the pause. And again, I'm gonna change the angle range. And now transform the geometry, we see that we get a proper transformation of both the normal and the tangent u. So that is the main difference for the deformation wrangle, as it can transform other attributes. So that means it can update other vector, quaternion, or matrix attributes, for instance. But it can only update the point and vertex attributes. So it cannot update, for instance, primitive attributes. 
Now, which attributes are transformed is defined in attribute to transform parameter. So we can limit which attributes are transforming this field. So for instance, we could disable recompute the affected normals and here just use the tangent u. And now we can see that the normals are not updated, but tangent u is. By default, it will transform all attributes and recompute the affected normals. And the way it calculates these derivatives is defined in the derivative step. And we have different methods here. So we have the central difference, four points, and explicitly set x form. Explicitly set x form will take the x form we calculated here. So we can calculate this x form ourselves, and it will be used to calculate the derivatives. The other two options, the four points and central difference, are a little bit different. And they will run over the deformation wrangle multiple times in order to calculate the derivatives. This means that calculating the derivatives this way can affect the performance as it must run the wrangle multiple times. And the difference is that the central difference runs over more times than four points. So the four points is uh, more of approximation and is biased and central difference is a bit more precise in most cases, but it will run over the wrangle more times. So it will be a bit slower. The step size must be set correctly per geometry as it does affect how this is calculated. And the rigid projection can be used uh, when we are dealing with shears and scale as it uses the polar decomposition to calculate the derivatives. So by default, it's the central difference method. And for now, let's just set it to explicitly set X form. So we'll calculate the X for ourselves because we are only rotating this here. We can also just multiply the X form by this matrix that has been rotated. And if we now rotate and here, uh, I will just correct this a bit because X form is a three by three matrix. And here I created a four by four matrix. So I will just convert it to a three by three matrix and get rid of this warning. So now we see that the tangent U has been properly transformed as well. So this is how the X form is used in the deformation wrangle. It basically calculates the rotation of each point as it is deformed. Now, because here is a very simple transformation, we are using just a transformation matrix and rotating it around, and we can just use that rotation to also rotate the actual point X form. However, calculating the X form can become much harder when we deal with scales, shears, and stretching of the geometry, for instance. So if we add a simple sign deformer to our code, and for instance, let's add here two additional parameters for the sign. We'll just have the amplitude and frequency. So now we have two additional parameters and let's calculate that we get this kind of wavy deformation. Uh, so we'll calculate the offset in X axis. And this one will simply be a sine function. We'll use the position Y. Multiply it by the frequency. And everything multiplied by amplitude. And now we can just translate this matrix by this offset. And now let's see what we get. So let's change the amplitude and frequency. So we get something like this. So as we can see, the tangent U is not updated again. So when we deform the geometry, of course, we would have to calculate at each point, depending on the, how the geometry is deforming, we should calculate a new rotation for the X form. So that in this case would be a bit harder to calculate. And this is why using, for instance, one of these methods, which automatically calculates the derivatives is a much easier choice. 
And now if you look at the the formation here, we see that the tangent u, I'm gonna just hide the normals and look at the tangent u, we see they are properly being updated. Sometimes the computed X form matrix will have the shear and scale components. And if we want to avoid that, we can use the rigid projection setting, which will use the polar decomposition so that the resulting X form matrix will be rotation matrix without shears and scales. In such case, the results or the way the attributes are transformed will be different. So depending what kind of deformation we are doing, we have to properly set these parameters. As we can see, if I change the step size, the results are different and so on. So all these parameters have to be tweaked a bit depending on the formation we are dealing with. Now the deformation wrangle can also update the quaternion and matrix attributes as well, as long as they are properly defined. So if we create an attribute wrangle to add a few parameters, and here, I'm going to say add attributes. And we add a quaternion. For instance, I'm going to just use a quaternion of the identity matrix. And then let's create two additional attributes. One will be a 3x3 three three matrix. And then another one that will be a 4x4 four four matrix. And for all of them, I'm going to start just with the identity matrix. So we have here, if you look at now here, we have a quaternion, matrix three and matrix four. And here, I'm gonna just open up a geometry spreadsheet. And first let's look at the quaternion. So when we rotate, nothing is happening. And if you look at, for instance, matrix three, again, nothing is happening. So the reason why they are not updated is because they are not defined properly. If you look at here, the quaternion and the matrix three and matrix four are just floats. This one is a four float, nine floats and 16 floats. So this one should be defined as a quaternion, this one as a matrix. And to do this, we can just use the set attribute type info function. And here for the quaternion, we just define it as the quaternion. Then for the matrix three, we define it matrix and the same for matrix four. So the way to use this function is to use define for which type of attributes, in this case points, which attribute and what type. So quaternion, matrix, and we could also define this way, the vectors, for instance. So now let's go back here and start rotating. We see the matrix is properly updated. And if you look at four by four matrix, it's the same way. And the quaternion, it's also updated. So to use the formation wrangle properly, the attributes must be properly defined. So when we look at the node information, we see that the matrix three and matrix four are of type matrix. The quaternion is of type quaternion, and then the vectors are of type vector. And we can also use the normals and so on. But the attributes must be properly defined. So the formation wrangle can properly update them. So this way we can update uh, the quaternion and matrix attributes as well. For instance, we could modify a KinFX skeleton with a deformation wrangle and compute transform matrix attributes and so on. So as we can see, the deformation wrangle is a bit unique and can be very useful when we need to deform the geometry and update other attributes beside the position and normal attributes. So that's it for this video and see you in the next one.